So let me now revisit the formalism of quantum theory just to um, see how we are doing when we start playing with quantum entanglement. So for the record, um, we know that uh, the, the mathematical formalism of uh, quantum theory, even though it's all about the addition and multiplication of probability amplitudes, it, it can be formalized in terms of uh, states, evolutional states and measurements. So we have a state that is usually described by some state vector in a Hilbert space. Um, then we have evolution that is a unitary operation. So if we have an isolated system, then what is happening to the state vector is just evolves in a, in a unitary way. So any quantum operation is, a, is represented by this unitary operator. And then we also have measurements. And I haven't talked much about the measurement uh, for a good reason. I, I would rather you to think about measurements as one entity getting entangled and therefore learning something about the other system, because that's what really it is. But um, in terms of mathematical shortcuts, uh, the measurement is essentially equivalent to introducing a orthonormal basis to this Hilbert space. So we have, um, so say, we have uh, some system A and we associate the Hilbert space. Um, so the state is a vector in this Hilbert space. Evolution is described by unitary operator. And then if we choose uh, an orthonormal basis, so we choose a basis um, E sub K. So those are the set of vectors EI, EJ, which are pairwise orthogonal to each other. and uh, and uh, it is a proper basis in the sense that any vector can be expressed in terms of, of those vectors. So they have to also satisfy the decomposition of the identity. So that means that if you consider the projector of that kind, sum over k. So there's a rank 1 projector on the basis vector. So if you sum over, that's the identity. Um, so that means that you know that as soon as you have a basis, you have some kind of a reference point to look at your vector. So your vector becomes a, a column vector with a probability amplitudes alpha one, alpha two, to alpha n, and your unitary operator becomes a matrix in this basics with uh, with entries u one one, u one two, and so on and so forth to u n n. So once you have probability amplitudes, you know how to get probabilities you take mod square. So, so in this sense, if there is a property that you are interested in and you associate a certain reference range, a basis in the Hilbert space with this property, um, then you then can make statistical predictions by decomposing the state in this particular basis. And then you have probability amplitudes and you have the probability amplitude alpha 1 that uh, the state uh, has uh, property 1, and alpha 2 that it has a property 2, and so on and so forth. Con you know, in, in, in most sort of a standard textbooks, you, you, you've probably been sort of uh, introduced to the notion of observable. People like to define the measurement in terms of uh, uh, taking sort of um, associating with some observable property, a Hermitian operator. And then looking at the spectral decomposition of this operator, and uh, simply saying that uh, this operator represents a physical property, so that if you perform the value, uh, if you perform a measurement on 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 your quantum system, then the eigenvalues will. Um, be sort of the outcomes of, of your measurement. That that you know that's fine, of course. But uh, except that, uh, you know, how you label the outcomes of the measurements in quantum information science is, is you know is a different kind of game. You don't have to use the real numbers for that. So it's not like measuring the momentum or spin component or something. Quite often, you want to send a signal. Um, you want to encode information in a quantum state. So you label the outcomes as A, B, and C, or any other symbol of your choice. So it's better, even though we, we talk about, uh, we will talk about uh, observables and, and we use this formalism, nonetheless, it's better to think about uh, quantum measurement as the 
as, as picking up a particular basis and we say that this is just a, a measurement in this basis, meaning that you just introduce your reference point because a given property that has a certain values is equivalent to choosing a way you look at the at the state vectors in the Hilbert space. So that's basically the, the formalism uh, so far. And, and that's pretty good, except that now we have um, another system that we add to A, system B. And then you say fine, because now we introduce the tensor product of those two Hilbert spaces. And that's, that's good enough, because that's, uh, that is another Hilbert space, and uh, we can repeat the whole game on a, on a, on a vector space that is um, a little bit richer, because it has this tensor product structure. But, but many things will just carry on, right? And that's certainly true if you treat the whole thing as the isolated system. So then you can, general, you can have uh, the concept of a quantum state on the tensor product of uh, those two Hilbert spaces and the evolution and the measurements. So that, that is very easy to generalize to the case where you have subsystems. Well, except that, as we know, if we look at the vectors in, in, this, in this space, some of them can be indeed written as uh, the tensor product. So that means uh, there is a state psi A associated with one subsystem and state psi B associated with another subsystem. But actually most vectors in this Hilbert space cannot be written in this form. So in most cases psi is simply doesn't admit this tensor product decomposition. So this class of rather peculiar unusual states is called separable. And those of course are the most interesting states, those are entangled states. So now um, here is a problem. So suppose uh, you lose system B, or, or you know, just it was a photon and just disappeared somewhere into the other side of the galaxy, and you are left with another photon that, that this one got entangled with. And you have to do all the measurements on this one and make statistical prediction on this one. So if you have an entangled state, the question is, how are you going to make statistical predictions if you cannot attribute a state vector to this subsystem? By definition, right? If the two subsystems are entangled, then you cannot attribute a state vector to any of the two subsystems. So we have to, th th there is a problem, of course, and with, with the concept of the state vector, it doesn't apply to subsystems, as you can see. The, the, this kind of description in terms of the state vectors and unitary evolutions and, and measurements as, as, as we specified it here is good when we deal with isolated systems. But when we have subsystems, uh, then we have, to, um, make, uh, we have to come up with a different set of mathematical tools. Um, we will talk about it, uh, of course, but uh, let me just only tell you that uh, any entangled um, vector so any 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 vector that is describing an entangled state, psi, of course, you know, can be decomposed in a tensor product basis. So if you pick up um, basis, say, um, a i here and b j here, then you can write any vector of uh, of the of the total system any state uh, vector of the total system as sum over i j c i j a i tensor b j. So we have uh, the tensor product basis, but uh, a superposition of tensor product, uh, a superposition of vector from tensor product basis, of course, is, is, is not the tensor product. Um, but nonetheless, any vector can be decomposed in, in, in this basis. Um, even uh, what, what is even more interesting is that uh, you can choose bases in, in this system, in this system, they're called Schmidt bases, and write 
in this new set of bases, um, write this uh, vector as sub over k, just one index. Um, here I let me just write it dk. And this is a special basis. Let me put a bar here. AI, so k tensor b sub k. And uh, it, it may be the case, um, so let me just comment. This is known as the Schmidt decomposition. So let me just comment on this. Um, so first of all, um, is it obvious that we can always write uh, uh, this state in this particular form? Uh, well, it's not obvious, but, but you can figure this out. All that is needed is, in fact, think about the Cij as a matrix and apply single value decomposition to this matrix. So any matrix, whether it's a square matrix or a rectangular matrix, can be written as, um, so the C can be written as U, D, V, well, okay, V dagger, where U and V are unitary matrices and D is a diagonal matrix. So look it up, singular value decomposition. Well, you apply singular value decomposition, es essentially those U and Vs rotate your bases and then you have a diagonal matrix. So those, those values here are positive or non-negative uh, coefficients. So this basis depends on the, on the state psi. So that's another important thing is that uh, it's, it's if you just pick up another vector, entangle vector, it will have the Schmidt decomposition, but it may not be in the same basis. So now, uh, if we have Hilbert spaces of different dimensions, uh, then this uh, k, the index k, goes from whatever one all the way to the minimum of whatever is smaller dimension of H a, or dimension of H b. Okay. So the summation goes through. Um, to, to the value, to the certain value that is not greater than the minimum, whatever is the lowest number here, whether, whether it's dimension of A or dimension of B. So now if you, if you again, maybe it's instructive to look um, at the state in this uh, Schmidt basis and, uh, and ask yourself questions. Okay, so if I were to describe the state, say, of the system, subsystem A, what does it, this expression tells me? Well, it tells me that, well, is it, uh, is it perhaps in state A1 or maybe A2, I mean A bar 1, A bar 2, uh, with a certain probability, which would be like d squared in this case. So that's one way of thinking about it. And, uh, and you will see that actually that uh, will lead us into a concept where we will be attributing a new entity to describe the state of the subsystem. That would be called the density operator. And it will have a sort of another, another way of, of describing density operator would be in, in terms of a statistical mixture of states by telling you that, uh, well, this describes the situation that we have such and such state with such and such probability, not probability amplitude. So that, uh, that will be clear later on when we talk about density operators. Um, so we will modify, we will have to modify, because of quantum entanglement, we will have to modify the, the, the sort of a set of rules that we use for uh, our quantum formulas, the way we compute probabilities. Instead of state vectors, we'll, have to be, ta we'll be talking about mm -hmm. density operators. In s the, the unitary evolution of the, of the isolated systems will, of course, stay. But uh, you will be asking then yourself a question, okay, how about the evolution of the subsystem? If, it is, if A and B, for example, are entangled and they evolve together through some unitary evolution, if I only trace A, would it also evolve in a unitary way? Well, if the two are entangled and the, uh, that the answer is no, but the, then, then we will be talking again, spoiler, about uh, trace preserving completely positive maps. So you will, you, will, you will see that we are going to generalize this unitary evolution. And the measurement will stay pretty much as it is, except that uh, we'll introduce some extra mathematical, well, not complications really, but sort of generalize it a little bit in terms of a um, positive operator measure. But that again, a buzzword for things to come 
in, 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 in the next few lectures.